Bonjour à tous. Nous sommes aujourd'hui le 10 mai 2020. Nous sommes en plein pandémie. La grande majorité d'entre nous sommes confinés dans nos maisons. Mon nom est Janet McNulty. Je suis ici aujourd'hui avec mes collègues de MAA Club Sportif de Montréal. Daniel Derry et notre directeur général, Pierre Blanchette. Je suis président directeur du Club Sportif MAA. Je suis là depuis 1999. Donc, je connais bien le club, les personnes qui y sont, puis les employés avec qui je partage mon, mes, mes journées normalement. Durant cette période de confinement sans précédent, nous devons rester à la maison. De nouveaux défis se présentent alors que nous perdons nos exercices d'entraînement réguliers. Revenir à la base comme nager, faire du vélo et courir sont des bons choix. Pierre, tu as l'expérience avec le Iron Triathlon qui regroupe toutes ces trois disciplines. Peux-tu nous partager des histoires que tu as vécues au courant de ces courses? Je pense qu'il y a beaucoup d'histoires reliées au Iron. <rire> j'imagine, euh, j'imagine. Je n'ai fait quatre. Les, les, quand je les ai faits, dans le fond, l'idée première, c'était de pouvoir aller au championnat du monde à Hawaï, ce que j'ai réussi à faire deux fois. Puis, wow. Je pense que chacune des disciplines ont, ont leur particularité. Je pense que la Ironman, c'est la distance qui fait un peu peur aux personnes normalement, euh, parce que c'est 4 km de natation qui est, qui est en, dans l'océan pour la plupart, pour ce que j'ai fait de tout. Et c'est 180 km de vélo, puis c'est un marathon à la fin de tout ça. Fait que ce, qui, ce qui rend le défi assez spécial, la majorité du temps pour Hawaï, c'est vraiment la température. La distance, on n'essaie pas vraiment d'y penser trop, parce que plus on pense que le défi est grand, moins on va probablement réussir à, à le remonter. Puis c'est un peu avec ce qu'on subit maintenant. Là, si on pense que c'est impossible de surmonter ce qu'on fait face, à ce moment-là, ça devient difficile d'y faire face. C'est certain. Puis juste ouais. une question de température aussi. Tout l'entraînement que, que tu as fait, c'était pas nécessairement dans les mêmes températures que tu as fait ta course au Ironman. Alors, ça a sûrement dit vraiment un, un gros contraste quand tu as, as été là-bas à Hawaï pour justement compétitionner quand tu n'étais pas entraîné à ce genre de température. Oui, dans le fond, pour s'acclimater ici, ce n'est pas évident parce qu'on fait on... les températures ne sont pas comme à Hawaï, c'est certain. Mais par contre, le, le, comment je dirais, c'est le, le, le fait de s'entraîner, notre système s'habitue puis se, se, comme s'adapte à plusieurs conditions. Le plus en forme on devient, le plus on est capable de s'adapter à ce qu'on doit faire face, que ce soit la température, le froid ou l'exigence d'une côte ou quoi que ce soit. Je pense que c'est l'entraînement en général qui fait qu'on qu est capable de surmonter même si les, temp les températures sont élevées ou non. C'est juste qu'on ne peut pas penser aller aussi rapidement quand la température est chaude et humide que quand c'est frais et sec. Ah, c'est sûr, oui. Il faut mmh. s'ajuster avec, avec ce à quoi on fait face la journée de la compétition, que ce soit du vent, du froid, de la chaleur ou quoi que ce soit. Mais c'est certain qu'il faut, qu faut s'adapter. Comment tu as préparé pour ça? Est-ce que tu as une équipe euh, ici à Montréal pour aider de faire des décisions pour tout ça? Non, I I've never. I mean, triathlon is sort of individual sport, and I've, I've studied, you know, in kinesiology. So for me, it's, it was the challenge of, of putting what I learned together as well at the same time. And And that the last one I did is, is in 2003, so it feels like a long time ago. Uh, so my, my, my training methods were, were scientific, if I can say, because my, my training and my studies were in that. So I, I basically used what I knew. And, but what you realize is, is, is you, like I said before, you always have to adapt, especially when I did that, you know, our kids were, were younger. So when you do it with a family, you, you sort of work around the schedule. I, you know, I used to go bike at 4.35 in the morning and 
came back when the kids were waking up. So no, nobody knew I had been training. Not, not all the time, but some, some of the times. And I was a trainer at the time, so obviously I liked the outdoors. So I trained my clients a lot of the time outdoors and a little bit, you know, our, our colleague Doris runs with his clients. I used yeah. to run my client, bike with my clients. So it was, it was part of my training at the same time. Okay. The pleasure of That's doing interesting. That. I tried to combine the two together as opposed to, to do it separate from it. I find it interesting that today we're having to learn to be alone and learn to be with ourselves more than ever. And I think that is an interesting link with this triathlon experience because uh, you are spending a lot of time alone. And so you're, you're stuck with yourself, with your own thoughts and what's going on. And, and I, I'm just curious if there's any kind of insight uh, that you could share with us of how that worked for you in preparing and doing a race of this nature. Um, yeah, well, obviously, when you when you race, you're not alone. You're surrounded by people. But when you train, most of the time, you know, you you are alone. But but I think alone time is 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 very valuable time. It's time to reflect. It's time to, you know, when you run or when you're on a bike ride, thoughts come through your head, and you know, you're solving things as 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 you're running or as you're. <laughs> <laughs> and you're getting rid of issues and aggressivity of some kinds that you might have built up. So it's a, you know, it's it's alone time, but it's it's. I think alone time is very valuable. Obviously, now we're forced to be alone more than we want to, so that's a situation that is a bit different. But but I think alone time and challenges in general are times for us to to get better and and to and to reflect and and see things differently. And running around, uh, uh, going to meetings, taking your kids everywhere, and all of a sudden you're in your home with your family, and you're you're spending possibly more quality time with everybody. And my dog's really happy. <laughs> oh, that, I think dogs are the happiest of them all. You know. It's, uh... <laughs> I'm I'm curious about the, the experience that you would have had, like literally if you're training by yourself as a swimmer and you're, you know, in this open water and you're in a pack. So you're training on by yourself and even in swimming pools, you don't kind of pack in a swimming pool. So what's that like to dive in the water and just be surrounded by a pack of people? Well, there there's a few things about the air. Most of them are done in the ocean. Obviously, in Hawaii, it's a, it's a beautiful place to swim because you see so deeply. But there's no black lines to follow at the bottom. So, and 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 in Hawaii, you know, you're you're two thousand people that are treading water, waiting for the start of the race. So, obviously, when you tread water, you're vertical, and all of a sudden that starts, and you're going like this. <laughs> so. It's a uh, and in, in, in Florida, the other Ironman I did, it's a running start. So you got over 2,000 people running in the water at the same time. I think they they have some wave starts now in the Ironman because it it did get a little hectic. And yeah. then obviously you try to find your spot. It takes about you know I, I would say about 400 meters before you can find a rhythm or or a better swimmer than you to follow in their draft. And, and not be taken away by somebody else that's trying to take your good spot. But, and, and then in Hawaii, especially a little less in Florida, but you have the swells. And when you swim, obviously you need to direct yourself. So you, you, can't, you can't just follow the person in front of you or the people in front of you because they might not be going to the, to the straight or the way to the buoy. Like you have to trust yourself and lift your head once in a while. But, with the swells being so high, if you lift your head in the middle of the swell, all you see is water. So you, oh, yeah. you need to, to time yourself as well to lift your head on top of the wave to, to be able to, to see where you're going. So it adds to the challenge, but, but it's salt water, so it's a little more buoyancy at the same time. So it's a, but it's, it adds to the challenge and, 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 and the fact that the challenge is a bit stronger, I think it, it does help you to focus more you know when you think it's going to be easy you sort of well, go with the flow and you know it's it's like playing hockey i've played a lot of hockey and when you play against 
where schemes you think it's going to be easy and then you mm -hmm. end up not playing your best so when the challenge is harder you focus a little more and you and you do better and that's the sort of thing you learn on the spot you were talking about the swells i mean you can't really prepare for that especially in the pool no definitely not but you know well there uh, is a wave pool in las vegas <laughs> <laughs> hey you yeah, should go swimming a in a theme park you know that's it <laughs> they're controlled waves so you know, there's been an analogy with this, the start of, a, of Ironman and, and most triathlons where they call that a washing machine at first. So it's a, hmm. and it's not the delicate cycle. Yeah, and apparently it's a big <laughs> fight in there. People pull each other's legs, they kick each other, they punch each other. It's a, that's also something you can't really prepare for. Well, you know, it's a competition. So people that are a little meaner in competition. If you, you want your spot, you want to keep it. And if someone wants to take it, then you, you do what you need to keep it. Whoa. I find the, it's a, another concept that keeps coming up right now to help us through this moment that we're in right now is the, the idea of positive thinking to cope with stress. Can you relate to that kind of concept at all during a race like that? I think racing in general, there's a part of fear in it. And with the RMN, there's a bit more because of the, you, you know, you sort of, you might fear the distance or you might fear you're not prepared enough to, to do that. But I think the, 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 the stronger the challenge or the, the, the worse the crisis, the more you find ways to, to overcome it. Um, I, I think what we're facing now, it's, it's, it's a bit of the unknown, you know, you, 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 a little bit like the Ironman, the finish line is far and the weather, the heat, the, the a, a puncture can, can make it feel like you're never going to reach it. And now, you know, we thought we were going to be able to, to Montreal start to get, come become active next week. And, <clears throat> and now it's been pushed back and, you know, it's a bit of a setback, but it's only a setback where, you know, we're, we're all going to get to the finish line and, you know, it's, it <laughs> might be not running as fast as we thought we would. It might be with some blister on our toes, but we're all going to get there. <laughs> what does it feel like to cross the finish line? Well, there again, I think it's, I think the bigger the challenge is, the better the feeling of overcoming it is. <laughs> uh, it's 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 as as good as it gets. <laughs> okay, so the the joy, the the happiness that you did it. Yeah, no, that's it, and and it's and that's what I've always liked competition. It's not uh, it, it's not to beat somebody else. It's to use everybody else to make you better, and you know it, even in our field, you know you. You, you, you're both trainers, I've been a trainer, and you know, you, you know some of, a few out there, some people are famous or are doing very well, and you know, and, and it forces you to, to, to read, to, to get better, and, 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 and to make sure you're up there and the people that are well recognized. Um, je pense présentement, c'est un peu, on fait un peu face à ça, d'une certaine façon, parce qu'on, on fait face à un défi qu'on ne connaît pas, tout le monde, mais par contre, on voit des choses qui sont vraiment en belles qui sont faites. Le monde s'entraide beaucoup plus maintenant. Oui, c'est vrai. Et comme nous, comme entreprise, ça nous force à se réinventer parce que je ne pense pas que même quand on va pouvoir revenir, on ne pourra pas revenir de la même façon. On a trouvé des façons de se connecter comme plusieurs à travers Zoom. Mais je pense que les classes, l'entraînement, euh, la, la connexion avec les membres, on va devoir trouver une façon de pouvoir la maintenir autre que par la proximité qu'on pouvait avoir avant, parce que maintenant, ça va être un peu difficile jusqu'à ce qu'on puisse retrouver une vie plus normale. Mais c'est certain que ça va revenir, mais entre-temps, ça nous force à trouver des, des façons de s'adapter. Pierre, je trouve que c'est intéressant quest ce que tu parles. C Merci beaucoup pour votre temps. Ben moi, ça me fait plaisir de partager ça avec vous. Puis je veux, je veux dire à tous les membres qui qu ont on, qu'on pense à eux, puis qu'on on trouve toujours des façons d'essayer de vous faire bouger. Puis je pense que présentement, vous pouvez en trouver un peu partout. Puis, like, we'll, we'll try to help you through this, and hopefully we'll stay connected to you and continue to help you. <laughs>